Hello, Monaco here. Uh, we are going to hit up our sixth homework lecture on atomic theory, and we're covering isotopes and the average atomic mass in this particular lecture. Uh, the focus question is how is an isotope different from an element and this weighted average calculation, some uh, mathematics, and you'll have a Google Classroom assignment to follow it all up. So let's get into it. So first things first, isotopes and average atomic mass. Well, isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons giving it a different mass. You can see this picture here of uh, the three isotopes of hydrogen. We have protium, deuterium, and tritium. They all have the same single one proton and one electron, but the neutrons are different, leading to different atomic masses. The number in the top left corner is the atomic mass. As we know, it's the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So isotopes have different numbers of neutrons leading to slightly different identities. Okay. Now, the symbol and atomic number always remain the same, but the mass changes, as I just said. Okay. Now, an average atomic mass, by definition, is the mass of the average of the naturally occurring isotopes of that element. As you can see here with carbon, the average atomic mass has a decimal value. Well, that's because not all carbons have six protons and six neutrons. Some of them, a very small number, have six protons, seven neutrons. And then even a smaller portion have six protons, maybe eight neutrons. So the average atomic mass needs to reflect that not all elements, as isotopes of elements are created equal. So in order to calculate the number, that atomic mass right up here, whooshed, we need two things. We need to know the mass of each isotope that exists and the natural abundance of said isotope. So how much there are. And we look at those as percentages. And here we go. So to calculate the average atomic mass for any element, we have to weight the average of the elements naturally occurring isotopes. And this is how we do it. So we have to take the percent abundance, so like 90%, 10%, 20% of a particular isotope in the decimal form. And then we multiply it by that particular isotope's mass. Okay? Then we add it to the next percentage times its particular mass. Okay, and so forth until we have covered all of the isotopes and the percent abundances, and we add them all up. Okay, this is not the average in the sense that, okay, we have three isotopes, I add the three masses, and I divide by three. That type of calculation assumes that they're all present in equal quantities. This type of a calculation, by multiplying by the percent abundance in a decimal form, takes into account that not all isotopes are created in equal quantities. So here's an example. Oops, wrong way. Backwards example. The element carbon occurs in nature as two isotopes. Calculate the average atomic mass for carbon. So for carbon-12, most of it's carbon-12. 98.89% of all the carbon atoms out there are carbon-12. And 1.11% of all the carbon atoms out there are carbon-13. So let me set this up and multiply across and then add together. So let me use two different colors. So for carbon-12, according to our previous page's calculation, I'm going to take the percent abundance in decimal form. So i got to take this number and put it over here. But a percentage in a decimal form, I take that decimal and move it two places to the left. So 0 0.9889 times the atomic mass of that particular isotope times 12. And then I have to add it, the product of that multiplication, to the second isotope. Okay. This decimal I have to move to as well. I have to put a zero in to placeholder. So if I put that one over here, open a parenthesis, 0 0.0111 times 
times the atomic mass of that isotope, which in this case is 13. Okay. When I set up my maths, let me grab a calculator here. I'm given two numbers that I have to add together. Okay, so 0 0.9889 times 12 gives me 11.868. That's from the first calculation. Then I'm going to add it to 0 0.0111 times 13, which is 0 0.1443. I'll put a zero there to hold the place. We're adding, so 8 and 4 is 12, 6, 10, 11, 8, 9, 10. Pull the decimal down, 2, 12. So you can see here that this is the average mass for the carbon, given those two particular isotopes. If you were given three isotopes, you'd have a third number to add here multiply a third factor to multiply and then add in so this is the weighted average calculation and it's reflecting that the vast majority of carbon out there has an atomic mass of 12 see how close this average atomic mass is to 12 well that's because 98 almost 99 percent of the carbon out there is carbon 12 so we add up those products and there we go this is a process that we have to get very good at because the mathematical equation for doing that is not presented in the reference tables at all. Okay. And it's always on multiple choice and usually on part two. So to finish your Google Classroom assignment, take your notes, take a screenshot of those notes, finish the online portion of the homework, and come to class ready to go over a few pages in our atomic theory pack. Thanks for watching.